Hi, this is calcu Calculus, section 2.4. In 2.4, we're going to be dealing with the chain rule. And before we get into that, I want you to warm up by taking these derivatives. Note that some of them don't need the quotient rule. And try them. Pause it and go ahead and try them, and then I'll, I'll go through the solutions. Okay, with this first one, a lot of people want to use the quotient rule, but you end up getting a zero when you take the derivative of the denominator anyways. And then these things will boost up, and then you got to cancel again. This is just a constant out in front. So let's just bring the 2 out in front. That goes with the numerator. So that would be 6 sevenths times x. That's all you need to do. You did not use, need to use the quotient rule. For this next one, uh, when you see this monomial in the denominator, a lot of times what makes it a lot easier is just to use the rabbit method. And so if I split this up, and you might say, well, there's no x there to cancel, but that's okay. We got x squared over x, so that would be x plus, and this one we just write and leave it as 3 over x. And this is the same thing as x plus 3x to the negative 1. Now if I go ahead and take the derivative of this, y prime is equal to 1 minus, so I'm going to bring the negative 1 out in front and put it with this 3, so it's going to be minus 3 and raise it to the 1 less power. 1 less again is negative 2. And so overall this becomes 1 minus 3 over, yes, that's more comfortable, three, 1 minus 3 over x squared. This one gets a little bit more tricky. Uh, it's got a product and a quotient in it. What I would do is I would just make it a product and then have a nasty little derivative inside there. So if I take the derivative of this, f prime of x, I'm going to do the first. So that would be the cosine of x. Now I'm going to do the derivative of this inside thing. So it turns out to be a quotient. So it's going to be low d high less high. Derivative of sine is the cos. Oh, no. I'm sorry. It's just high d low. The derivative of the denominator is 1. Draw the line and denominator squared will go. And so that's what I have for that piece. So that's just first times the derivative of the second. I still need the second times the derivative of the first. So I'm going to go plus the second, which is sine of x over x, times the derivative of the first which would be the derivative of the cosine would be negative sine. And so overall, f prime is equal to, and simplifying this then, I have x cosine squared, so I just distribute this in, and then the cosine times that would be minus cosine x sine of x, this all is over x squared. And so this one's over x only, so I'm going to put an x in here and then put a squared there just to get a common denominator. And then I'm going to put this last term, so this would be minus x sine squared x. And this is all over x squared. Right now that's good enough for our purposes. I don't know if you can factor that and simplify it more, but that's what we're leaving it as. Okay, this next one, you might want to use the quotient rule again. But I would say no, rewrite. So this is 4x to the negative 2. And so if I take the derivative of this, y prime would be equal to negative 8x to the negative 3. That's about it. So we get negative 8 over x cubed. Moving on. Uh, double check those and make sure that you did get those right. Moving on to the chain rule. If we have a composition of functions, and this is really important, composition means I have one function inside of another. So how you've seen this a lot of times is f of g of x. And when I have this situation, I need to do something different than just take the derivatives of both and work with them that way. How it will turn out is that you'll take the derivative of the outside function, leave the inside function alone, and then you do what we call the chain. This is the chain of the inside, inside function. And so whatever the inside function is, we'll do a chain here. And the best way to do this is to show you some examples. So if I look at this one, this is a composition of functions. You could think of the square root function on the outside and the x squared plus 3 on the inside. So what I'm going to do is, well, first of all, I'm going to rewrite this x squared plus 3 
raised to the one half. So the outside function is the radical here, is this square root deal. And then the inside is going to be this. So what we do is we apply the outside function rule. Well, with this one, it is the power rule. So I'm going to go 1 half, and I'm going to leave the inside alone. Raise it to the 1 less power. Don't forget that. And so normally that's what we've done already. But then what we have to do is we have to go ahead and take the chain of the inside function. So you take the derivative of whatever function is in here, and the derivative of x squared plus 3 is simply 2x. And with that, we can clean this up. This 2 will cancel with this, and then get rid of the negative exponent. So I'm left with x over x squared plus 3 to the 1 half. That would be your answer right there. OK? Uh, this next one falls along the same pattern. I think you can maybe recognize this. The outside function would be the fifth. So we're going to do the power rule there again. So y prime is equal to 5. Bring it outside. x cubed minus 4. Raise it to the 1 less power. Now once again with this inside function, I just dealt with the outside function now, I need to take the derivative of the inside function. So this would be times 3x squared. This is what we call the chain. I can simplify. This would be 15x squared, x cubed minus 4 raised to the fourth. And that's the chain rule. And we're going to get into some more advanced things and put this in with the product rule, quotient rule, in these next examples. All right, when we see these, first of all, this one, if I want to take the derivative, and that's what we're doing with all these, we're finding y prime. If I, if I want to find y prime with this one, this is just a constant multiple. And as we said before, the constant multiple just goes along for the ride. So when I take the derivative, well, let me rewrite this first. It's nice to see the exponent there. So that's 1 half there. So I'm going to go y prime. This 3 goes along for the ride. And then I'm going to bring the 1 half out in front. So it's 3 halves. Take this inside function, leave it alone, and raise this to the 1 less power. Now once again, I need to take this inside, and I need to take that, the chain of that, and I get 2x. These cancel, and so I'm left with y prime is equal to 3 x over, this is a negative exponent, so I move it back down. There, it's much more comfortable. Thank you. All right, now, what are we going to have to do with this next one? It looks very similar to number 2, but now I have a variable. It's not a constant multiple on the square root, but I look at this, and I think, oh, I got a product. So I need to use the product rule. When we do the product rule, we're going to have to take the derivative of this. What I like to do is to go off to the side sometimes, and I say, I need the derivative of this later, so I'm going to write it down now. So if I do the derivative of x squared minus 1 to the 1 half, I know that that's equal to 1 half x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 half, which is equal to, oh, i got to do the chain. Don't forget the chain. And then so this is equal to x over x squared minus 1 to the 1 half. I do this off to the side just because when I start getting the product rule involved, I don't have to think about that derivative. So here we go now. I go y prime is equal to the first times the derivative of the second. So there it is for me. I already have it. So first times the derivative of the second, and then I get plus the second times the derivative of the first. So it's going to be square root of x squared minus 1. That's the second. And the derivative of the first would be a 3. I just left a space in there so I can sneak the 3 in. Now I should probably simplify this. So y prime is equal to, well, if I multiply this one, well, hang on a second. 
I, I just need to get a common denominator here. This is 3x squared. I should, I should rewrite this. I don't like it when it's top and bottom like that. Sorry. 3x squared over... all of this. So to get a common denominator, I need to multiply this top and bottom by square root of x squared minus 1 over square root of x squared minus 1. That works out kind of nice because that just works itself out. So I get 3x squared. Here I'm going to get, I got to distribute the 3 amongst both of those. So I'm going to get plus 3x squared and then that would be minus 3 all over x squared minus 1. So I get 6x squared minus 3 over x squared minus 1. Square root of all that. That is my derivative. So I can circle that. All right, I got some disappearing things there. Then the next example. Let me clean some of this up. I'll come back. Okay, so if I, I'm just going to erase this piece now, if it allows me. If I erase this just to get this out of the way, that was just how we got the common denominator. Now, looking at the next problem, we have something that's kind of similar, and a lot of these are very similar. Uh, with this one, you can do it one of two ways. You can do a quotient rule. Remember, go off to the side and find the derivative of this one. It's very similar to this one, though. In fact, it's identical, except for I'm going to have a plus there. So I have that one already. So if I do a quotient rule, I'm not going to rewrite that right now. I go y prime is equal to low. Here we go. d high less high d low. Well, that's going to be this thing, except for with a plus. This is a minus here. So times x over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Draw the line, denominator squared will go. So x squared plus 1. If I have the square root, I square it, I just get that. So let's review it, make sure I did it right. Low, d high, so that's the derivative of the high, less high. And then the derivative of low turns out to be this thing here, x over x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half, because this is a plus. And now if I want to clear my fractions, I really didn't leave much room here, did I? If I want to clear my fractions out, what happens is that I need to multiply top and bottom uh, by this denominator here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can do that too, and I'll come back to you. So I multiplied top and bottom here by the square root of x squared plus 1, and I have to distribute. So I got this times this, which would just be left with the 2x times, well, square root, square root goes away. So I just have this. And then this denominator will cancel when I multiply by this piece, so I'm just left with x cubed. And then down here, I have one of these times a half of these. I, I don't know if I said that right exactly, but I'm, I have the bases that are the same, so the exponents I'm going to add. If I take 1 and add it to 1 half, I'm going to get 3 halves. So this is what I end up with. And simplifying this, this is 2x cubed plus 2x minus x cubed. I'm going to simplify that more without writing the denominator. So that would just be x cubed plus 2x all over x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. That 3 is not showing up very well, but that's a 3 over 2. All right? So that just helped me simplify. You could rewrite this as a product rule and bring this up as a negative 1 half exponent, and you should get the same answer if you do it right. Guaranteed. It all works out, believe it or not. Okay, now this last few examples is that I do have this inside function. This one you'll see very, very often. So this is my outside function here, and this is my inside function. So when I take the derivative, I take the derivative of the outside function. Well, the derivative of sine is the cosine. Leave the inside alone. 
And then once again, I have to go ahead and chain. So I take the derivative of this inside and the derivative of the inside would be three. So overall, this would be three cosine three X. That's your Y prime. This one here, I have a negative X inside. And so when I do a chain on that one, well, let's see, Y prime, this two goes along for the ride. Derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. Leave the inside alone. And then we do a chain off the inside. So I take the chain of this one, and that would be a negative one. I don't know where that went. So what I'm going to get here then is uh, negative two secant squared of negative x. Now there is an identity here too for this negative x since this is the reciprocal of the cosine. Cosine is an even function. Secant is an even function. So if I take this, uh, if you use your fu uh, even function rules, this negative could go away if you wanted to. But I'm just going to leave it like this right now. Okay, this last one. If we do y equals, I'm going to rewrite this. And we used to have to do this on the calculator. I don't know if you have to do it anymore. But you have to cover everything up and call it squared because you are taking the cosine and you're squaring it. So if I look at this now, I have three functions total. This is an outside function that I'll deal with first. This is another outside function when I do my first chain. And I'm going to end up with two chains. Th composition of three functions, I'm going to end up with two chains. So let's see how this works. Y prime, the outside function is the two. I bring it down, leave the inside alone. Now I have to go inside here though and take the derivative of the inside. When I look at the inside, ooh, that's very similar to this problem number five over here. So if I take the derivative of the inside, I'm going to get times the derivative of the cosine would be negative sine Oh, I don't like when that does that, times 3x. I'll get it back. And so I took this derivative of this inside function. I get this here. Now I still have another inside function. So I have to do the chain one more time. The derivative of this one would be 3. Now don't go too far. Some students love chaining forever. They find different things to chain. But if you look at, I have a composition of three functions. I'm going to get two chains where this is chain number one, and this is chain number two. So if I simplify this, y prime is equal to, and it simplifies to this. This is the chain rule, and that's what we're doing. So make sure that you take the derivative of the outside function, leave the inside function alone, but then go ahead and take the derivative of the inside function. Thank you.